Ben, it is so great to see you. you I can't tell you how many times I think about you and how many times that, that uh, I wish I could see you play again. When I was a young man, there was one thing I carried in my wallet that's since gone, but I never forgot it. One statement that you said, there isn't enough daylight in any one day to practice all the shots you need to. That's exactly right. You must have done that for, you must have believed it when you, when you practiced. You must have gone about it in a way that was second to none. Uh, uh, well, uh, I had to. Uh, I had such a lousy golf swing uh, starting in, and I'm, it's worse now, since I've done away with the backswing and the follow-through. And uh, uh, my game is not for display at, at the moment. Uh, but you're talking about practicing, I just love to practice. Uh, hit all kinds of shots around the green, uh, 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 playing holes in my mind, uh, and it was a great satisfaction to me, and, uh, uh, not for winning a tournament or anything like that. I got great satisfaction each and every day. I could come from business or something like that and go on the practice team, and I forgot everything except uh, what I was doing at the, at the moment. And uh, there is no greater pleasure uh, than a person practicing and trying to improve. Uh, improving uh, is the greatest satisfaction anyone could ever get. And the fellow that's uh, shooting 90, if he can cut it down to uh, 87, uh, he's pleased. You'll see him up to the golf course the next day. And the fellow that shoots 70, if he can shoot 69, he's just as pleased, and he'll be back the next day. It brings him back, and it keeps him enthused all the time. And, and, and it's the greatest pleasure in the whole world to me, to us. I first met you in 1954. I was paired with you at the Masters, and in straight, I was in awe of you at that time because of your year in 53. And I always thought, you know, to get to know you and to play with you, 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 you turned pro when you were 19. That's right. Did you ever dream that these things would happen to you? Never. Never. It's a, it's a God gift, really. You had uh, what they might have said, you said they had a bad hook or your swing, and you changed your swing. That's right. How long did that take? Well, let's see. It took you nine years before you won. I was in Chicago, uh, if you don't mind me calling. Uh, let, let me recall it. I like it. And uh, I was hooking so badly uh, that I couldn't get a forward off the ground. Uh, and I had to use iron clips all the time. Uh, and after that tournament, I came home, and I, of course I said to myself, uh, uh, you can't play this way. There's no way to ever win or ever do very well. You're going to have to train yourself to be able to get the ball in flight and hit a high shot when you want to or a low shot. Uh, but for heaven's sake, you've got to get rid of this hook. Uh, but, uh, because a uh, 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 left to right dog leg, I couldn't play it at all. If they had any trees on the right side, I didn't have room to start, start my hook out there. I, could, I just couldn't play it at, 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 at all. So I said, there's something that has to be done. Uh, so I came home and I spent two weeks here. And uh, I woke up one morning and I had an idea how to do this. And uh, this is just about daylight. I went to the golf course and spent uh, all day until dark. And this thing worked like a charm for me. And I've tried other things, you know, and you go back the next day and it won't work. So uh, I must have had uh, two or three hundred balls in my practice sack. And the next day I said, I'm going to try it again. And then it worked again. Uh, so then I, I thought it would work and I said, well, uh, I've got to put this under pressure now. So I went back to Chicago for another tournament uh, about uh, uh, two weeks later to find out if the pressure would hold what I had. And sure enough, it did. And uh, uh, I learned how to fade the ball, get it, get it up in the air, and I can still hook, of course. Uh, and my shots, uh, they either hook or slice now. I can't have a straight one. Well, you don't have to do anything anymore because when at the peak of your game, when I watched you play, uh, I first 
really saw you play at Oakmont in 1953, which was your best year uh, as far as competing. But I remember watching you on the second hole in the afternoon round on, uh, at Oakmont when you stood there and looked at the second hole and the wind and the pin was in the toughest pin place that I could ever imagine and you put it about two and a half feet from the hole. I have to believe that in your game, not only taking nothing away of a great player, your management of a golf course has to be second to none. Uh, uh, Kitty, I, I remember that shot, and the pin was cut way back on the on the top side of the green, and the green was uh, fairly narrow there. And uh, uh, maybe the shot came off like I planned it, uh, or or it may have been a little look involved, and I, I I'm guessing that also. But uh, management on the golf course, after a fellow learns how to hit a golf ball, that's all there is left is management. And management is about 70, 75 percent of the game after you learn how to propel a golf ball. And uh, if you don't know how to manage a uh, 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 golf game, uh, then, uh, then you can't play. You can, you can be the greatest hitter of a golf ball in the world if, if, if you don't manage it right. We have three driving machines out here at the plant. One just hits the balls repetitiously, and the other is a mechanical man, and of course the third one is me. But uh, uh, the other two are saying you're number one. <laughs> I'll trust you. No, I, 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 I'm a third one. But uh, to set up a driving machine, it takes some time and some knowledge to know how to do it. Uh, well, uh, if you've got something that's repetitious all the time, and a golfer certainly isn't repetitious, uh, he has to work in practice and uh, all the time, all the time. And it is management on the golf course. What is required of this shot? What is required of the next shot? Where do you want to uh, uh, try to place the ball on the next hole, uh, on the right side of the fairway, the left side of the fairway? Uh, and how, how, you, how should you play this hole? And it's, it, it's where do you tee up on the tee, between the tee markers? You should be on this side one time and on this side the next time. Well, uh, you see golfers that just tee up the same place every time. It's the worst thing in the world. They don't give themselves any margin. Uh, it's, it's absolute management. And uh, uh, Hilly, uh, Hilly Greens, with a lot of un uh, undulations, uh, you should play uh, 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 down the hill all the time. Uh, so you get an uphill putt. Now, it can't always work that way, but at least you try. And you manage this game for, for three and a half to four hours. And if you can't do that, you can't play. These fellows on the tour now, uh, uh, they are so good, you wouldn't believe it. Anytime, and I, I, I've seen it uh, this winter, uh, where they've broken 70, uh, four rounds in a row. Uh, I think it's just uh, outstanding. And those fellows know how to play, uh, they know how to think, and they, and, and they study a golf course uh, to know how to play it. And each golf course is different. Some you get a feel of, and some you can't get a feel of. And, and, and the ones you don't get a feel of, uh, I don't think you're going to come close to winning. The other statement that I carry for always, and I remember well, is that every day I miss practicing takes me one day longer to be good. And I know you believe that. Well, uh, 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 very few times in my life I've laid off maybe uh, two to three days. And it seemed like it took me a month to three months to get back those three days where I was uh, uh, when I took a rest. Uh, it's a tough situation. Uh, I had to practice and play all the time. Uh, I told you before, uh, my swing wasn't the best in the world, and I know it, and I, and I knew it was. And then I thought, well, the only way I can win is just to outwork these fellows. So uh, they might work two hours a day, and I'd work eight. So uh, then after I won a couple of terms, I noticed these fellows were practicing longer. And I don't know why that was. Uh, but they had to stay with me. Uh, and if it had been uh, 12 hours during the day, I would have been out there 12 hours, because I enjoyed it. Well, I mean, that's why it all works out. It's not only what you enjoy, it's what that you enjoyed working at. But you know, you went, I think the turning point, I just feel like, you know, uh, talking with you for so long and playing. I guess I played as much golf with you 
as anyone in my era, and I've watched it so, so close and know so much about the background. Oakland, California was where the breaking point of where you decided whether you're going to play or go back home for another job. That's exactly right. Well, I started back before then. I went to uh, the West Coast on the tour in 1932. Uh, I went broke. I left here with seventy-five dollars in my pocket to go to the West Coast. Would you try that today? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. And I went with uh, uh, Ralph Hutchinson and Jack Ralph. Uh, and the first tournament was Pasadena. Uh, uh, I didn't get any money there. Uh, next one was. Can't think of the name of it right now. Next one was the LA Open, and then Alo Caliente. Uh, I would win $25, 50 dollars. I was always last if I got the money at all. And I, as I say, I was a terrible player. Uh, anyway, uh, we played uh, after Alo Caliente, uh, uh, Phoenix, Texas Open, and New Orleans. And uh, after New Orleans, uh, I wasn't in the money, and I was broke. I had to come home. So I spent five years uh, compiling, this time, $1,400. And uh, in the meantime, we got married, Valerie and me. And uh, I told her, I said, I'd like to go back on the tour. She said, I knew you had this in mind all the time. Uh, she said, well, if that's what you want to do, we'll do it. Now, this is 1937. That's five years later. Uh, and there's a story why I went broke, and I'll tell you that later. And anyway, we'll start back when the, and, uh, the first time I, uh, I played in then, in 1937, uh, was the General, General Rock Open in Niagara Falls, Canada. Uh, I won $50 in the tournament, and I was second to Jimmy Thompson in the driving contest. We used to have those all the time. Remember those? Oh, yeah, we oh. I didn't know what man. Oh, I didn't know what oh, Okay, well, I was second to him, of course. Uh, well, not of course, but uh, uh, of course he was the longest hitter, so he was going to win the driving contest. And I think I got seventy-five dollars there. Anyway, we played through what they call the summer tour in those days. They didn't have a tournament every week, and sometimes you have to lay over someplace. And then uh, two weeks later, they had another tournament. Anyway, I played the summer tour, and uh, then. We started back on the winter tour. Uh, and we played again, the Pasadena Open, the Los Angeles Open, and I missed the money in the Los Angeles Open. And we were driving to Oakland, California. And well, he said, uh, you know how much money we have? And I said, yes, I know. Uh, we had $86 left out of the $1,400. So she said, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, we uh, we made a deal to spend $1,400. Uh, we have 86 left, and we're going to open. So, uh, we shopped all around for a hotel room, uh, the, the least expensive we could find, and wasn't eating very well, and buying no clothes at a hotel. Uh, anyway, the Leamington Hotel uh, gave the pros a rate. And it was the best rate I could find in all of Oakland. So we stayed there. Okay, the morning of the tournament, I was driving a, a, a red Buick, maroon Buick, and across the street, uh, there was a parking lot there. It's a gravel, of course, and I'm sure there's a big building there now, nowadays. But uh, in those days, in the first round of the tournament, uh, I had a fairly early starting time, and left the hotel after breakfast, uh, went across the street, and, and, and my car was jacked up. And they're sitting, my two rear wheels are sitting on rocks. Uh, and they've taken, they taken, even taken the jack. So I uh, came back to the hotel and uh, uh, bummed a ride with somebody. I can't remember who now. Uh, anyway, uh, I got to the course and it was late and I couldn't get any practice balls. Uh, because I'd be disqualified, you know, give me five minutes leeway. Well, I need more than five minutes. Uh, uh, so, uh, I played, and I won $385. It's the biggest check I've ever seen in my life. 
and I'm quite sure it'll be the biggest check I've ever seen. Uh, it's, those, those are the days that, that, you know, I guess without the downs, the ups wouldn't mean so much. And going on from there, 46 to PGA, 48 to PGA and, and, and the Open, and then 49, the accident, and after you'd reached this peak, not your peak really, but everyone thought it was, the accident, again, uh, did you ever think you'd come back out of that? I mean, uh, back to where you even come close to where you were? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, my doctor said I wouldn't. Uh, uh, but the way I felt, I thought I would. And I'm sure it would take me a long time. And I started working uh, just as hard as I could work. Uh, uh, even more than eight hours a day. I used to put, uh, pitch uh, in our bedroom uh, at night. Uh, and it took me uh, 11 months uh, to get back where I could play at all. And, uh, Finally, I got to where I could play a little bit, not as good as I could before, and I don't think I ever will play that good, or ever, or ever I have since, even though I won some tournaments. But uh, I was better in uh, 1948 and 49 than, than I've ever been. So, mm -hmm. I felt that I felt that uh, a lot like most great champions. The one word I think was your biggest drive, and I know it's was mine, is someone saying you can't do it. You can't, you, you can't do it again. That was the best, best word that anyone could ever say to me, and I'm sure it was the best word they could ever say to you to keep you driving. Well, uh, uh, if you, if, uh, first off, let me, let me say this. Uh, my, my family wasn't rich, they were poor. I feel sorry for for uh, rich kids now. I really do, because they're never going to have the opportunity I had. Uh, because I knew tough things, and I had a tough day all my life, and I can handle tough things. They can't. And every day that I progressed was a joy to me, and I recognized that. I don't think that I could have done what I've done uh, if I hadn't had the tough days to begin with. Uh, and I'm a real well in the Well, it's that if you've had your ups and you've had your downs, and they're both worth it, aren't they? They, they are. They are. They are. You can't, I don't think anybody could ever appreciate success without adversity or your health unless you've lost it. It's one of those things, but I know that when I practice, I still think of you often. I really do. I just, I, I, you went on, you won the Open in 50 and 51, and then 53 was the Triple Crown. You really, you won the Masters, you won the Open, and then you went to England for the first time? No, 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 no. Yes, yeah, Scott. Scott. Mm -hmm. For for uh, the British Open at Car at Carnoustie. Carnoustie. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must have won at that very bad. I did. And how did the approach going over there? Well, that was a sort of a vintage year for me, '53. Uh, 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 Bobby Cruikshank. Maybe you remember him. I, well, I, I do. Know, well, um, Walter Hagen and Tommy Armour called me on the telephone and said that you can't complete your career unless you go uh, uh, to Scotland and compete in the British Open. Uh, and I thanked them and I still had no inclination to go over there at all. Uh, anyway, uh, I won the Masters and I won the uh, Open uh, that, that year and I sent my entry in uh, to the British Open. The PGA was in conflict with the British Open, and I played in the, in, in the PGA several times. So I thought, well, uh, these fellows have asked me to do this. Uh, I think I'll oblige you. Uh, so I went over there. And, uh, 
who luckily enough I had a good turn and, and, and won the tournament. And I'm delighted that I did. Yeah, take a take parade down New York. Yeah, right. And don't get many of those. Never forget that. No. That must have been a real thrill. Really that was a thrill. Ooh. Then, everyone knows about the four opens you won. And I remember the other four probably you could have won. In 55, 56, 59, and 60. But at 60, at Denver, you hit probably the best shot to the 71st hole that missed carrying the water by six inches. If it does, you make birdie, you win by two shots. And they come back close uh, with four opens and then four times that uh, to lose the open, not to lose it for the word lose, but uh, to come back close that many times, that had to be gratifying too. Yes, it There's was. There's nothing in losses, but yes, you don't like losses. It was. You know, uh, you mentioned that shot on the 71st hole at uh, Denver. Uh, I find myself waking up at night thinking of that shot right today. How many years ago was that? 1960. Well, it's been 23 years ago, and uh, there isn't a month that goes by that that doesn't cut my guts out. It was not a missed shot. You can't call it a missed shot. I, I don't know. I didn't miss it. I just didn't hit it far enough. It hit uh, just short of the green, bounced on the green, and I had a lie that I could hit with a driver for my third shot there. And I, uh, I put so much spin on it, that I just sucked it right back in the water. Well, that would have been number five. Uh, well, I may have already won the, the, the fifth one. Yeah, tell me about the fifth one. I, you know, everyone's been talking about it. I know about it. Tell me, there is a fifth one somewhere, isn't there? Well, I have five medals. Uh, and the president of the USGA has presented each one of them to me. Uh, this was the Hale American National Open in Chicago. What year is that? Uh, 1942. I believe it was 42. Yeah, it had to be 42. The witness service in 43. Uh, I played the last 36 holes with Bobby Jones. And I won the tournament. Uh, uh, Jimmy Newmeric was second. Uh, and uh, Mr. Tufts, uh, uh, Dick Tufts, Dick Tufts was president of the USGA. He presented me with this with this medal for winning uh, this tournament. And it's identical to the other four. Then we'd have to call it five, wouldn't we? Well, Joe Dye does. Well, uh, I'll, call, I'll call it five. <laughs> okay. <I'll call> it <laughs> and, when you, and when you were, what, 50 years old, you went into the golf club business. You started the Ben Hogan Company. Well, we bought, I bought this uh, property out here in 1953. And uh, we put we made some clubs in early 1954, and I wouldn't sell them, and I cut them all up. They weren't uh, up to what I wanted to put out, and I lost a partner in the deal, and so I took it on myself. And the first club that we put out was in 1954, and thank goodness we've been doing well ever since. It was the Open in 1955, only two people players played the Hogan Club, and that was you and Jack Fleck in the tournament. Yeah. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, he knew I was coming out for the tournament, and, and he was going to play there, uh, uh, and he asked me, uh, would I make him a pitching club and a sand club, uh, which I did, and I took them out in my bag and gave them to him before the tournament started. Uh, and frankly, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Beating you in your own club. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Going on to, to that, in 1967, I have to believe the, the, the greatest ovation I, I can ever remember hearing is in the third round, you went out in 36 and played the back nine of Augusta National in 30 strokes. That's right. I watched you walk up 18, and I wouldn't have missed that for the world. That was the best, greatest ovation, and it had to be a great display of golf. Well, I'm glad I didn't miss it. Well, I'm glad either. Yeah. But you birdied, uh, you birdied the last hole right. for 30. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you walked up a tribute that uh, I'm sure that uh, they will 
not be forgotten soon because it was well deserved and yeah. everything you've ever done, everything that uh, you've been a credit to the game, uh, like so few but great champions, you got out at the time when it was time. Uh, you have found that uh, you've given back to the game. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that, that I'd like to know for myself. Right. Who do you think, in all areas, wherever you pick, who do you think were some of the great players that you saw or you knew of? That's not easy. Well, of course, uh, uh, Kenny, I don't go to tournaments now, and I, I'd love to go and, and see these fellows play and, and uh, see them on a, a practice tee, uh, but, but it, uh, it, it, it's, uh, I can't do it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'd say these fellows that are playing now uh, were better players than we were. Now, my contemporaries and, and the better players, of course, were uh, Snead, Nelson, uh, Demerit, uh, you know, Jackie Burke, and I could go on and on and on and on. Uh, and uh, the only two people I never played with uh, were uh, 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 Harry Barton and, and Ray. I came right after them. I'm older than you think I am, I suppose. Huh? No, no, no. I don't know exactly how old I am. I, I even played with you a lot of times. I know. Yeah. You, don't, you, have, yeah. you have pounced on a lot of people. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well, uh, in my opinion, uh, these fellows that are playing now uh, were far better players than we were. And I am delighted that they are, really. Because if they weren't better than we were, then uh, I would feel like I never contributed anything to the game. That is, that is very true. That's true. You know, you're very, and I've known you, you're very humble, but there's so much strength and humility, and you, you, you're always first to say someone's better or someone is that you didn't swing well or whatever you did. Uh, that is a tribute to you. Well, thank you. Do you think the golf courses have gotten better, of course, better or easier with the score? Oh, no, I don't think they well, they're in better condition now because people know how to take care of grasses more than they did a long time ago. Uh, they get better lives and, and uh, uh, things like that. I think the equipment is much better, at least ours is. Uh, uh, the golf balls are better. Uh, these fellows uh, started in high school playing golf. They went through college uh, playing golf. Uh, they had a lot of competition uh, in college and, and in high school. And then when, uh, when they played amateur golf, they had a lot of competition. But I never had any competition at all but up until I turned pro. And, and I found out the first day that I, that, that I shouldn't even be there. <laughs> so uh, 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 they've got a leg up, uh, which is fine. And I'm delighted. And uh, the money they're getting, uh, they're, they're not getting as, as much as they should be getting, as a matter of fact. They, I, I'm, I'm for it. I am too. Yeah. I think it's got to grow more and more. And without people like yourself, it wouldn't have grown. It wouldn't have been, uh, it wouldn't have been the game. I made a speech once and told and I said, every time you see a Mr. Hogan or a Nelson or a DeMerit or the Nicholas's or Aaron Palmer's, wherever they may be, thank them because they are, have made it for for you to play in a game that is, we've had the cleanest game in the world, and without, you certainly didn't play golf because you thought you were going to make a lot of money, you played it because you loved it. You couldn't make any money. I couldn't, I, I never made a nickel in golf tournaments. I won 49 of them. And I, I never made a nickel in one. I, after the U.S. Open, I used to book myself at 20 to 25 exhibitions. That's the only way I could make a, make a living in, uh, during the year. Uh, uh, and as you say, all the fellows that preceded me, uh, you know, Hagen, Jones, uh, Sarazen, Crookshank, uh, Armour, uh, those, those fellows uh, uh, put a rug out for me. Otherwise, I, uh, there wouldn't be any golf tournaments. Well, you've given it back. Yeah. And, and <laughs> pick me. Pick some golf courses your favorites. If you had to play them, if you could, if you go back out today and you said I have a chance to play like I would, what golf courses would you pick? 
But I'm always like Seminole yeah. uh, out of Palm Beach uh, because it's an excellent golf course, and even though it's only about 6,800 yards long. Uh, but the wind changes almost every day. It's a very fair golf course. You can see everything. There's no blind shots. I can't play by radar. I've got to look at, uh, I've got to see the green or something. Uh, 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 Oakmont, where they're going to play the Open this year, is a great golf course. Uh, uh, Oakland Hills uh, used to be before an architect got there and ruined it, and now they've, uh, they've restored it, and I'm quite sure it'll be back where it used to be. Uh, uh, it's an excellent golf course. And uh, Olympic uh, in San Francisco. The lake course is one of the toughest I've ever played, and so it's a very fair course, but you have to play golf there. Now, all three of those courses is, is where they play the U.S. Open, and they have other great golf courses uh, that they've built thousands of them uh, that I've never played and I have, have never seen. But uh, during my time, I thought these were the uh, four finest golf courses I've ever seen. And, uh, I'd like to go back and play them sometime. But as I say, my game is not for display now. Uh, <laughs> especially on the green. <laughs> uh, uh, everyone knows how to get in if you're good at knowing when to get out. But what you do and with your company and your golf and what you've given back, I, I, I just would like to say that, that I've enjoyed the visit and it's been a great thrill for me today to bump into you and and talk with you, and then all I can say, and I guess it would be from those who have ever met you, that it has been a privilege to play with you, and it has been indeed an honor to know you. Well, it's, it's, it's my privilege. Thank you, Ben. To play with you and to know you. Okay. Thank you for a nice Good. day. And I'm Good. And uh, next Good. year, uh, I hope you win the Legends Tour. Well, <laughs> as you said, I'll play the legend when I become a senior. Is yeah. that what you said? Jack has got an uh, impediment in his putting stroke now. Yes, yes. We broke it, though. We took it away. Oh, it is? Yeah. But the hands are still the same. Yeah, I see. <laughs> okay. But I appreciate it. Nice visiting with you. Thank Jenny. you, Ben. Come back again. Uh, I'm delighted to have you back here. Oh, uh, it's good. great. Good. Thank you. All right. Smaller, so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>